What's up everybody? Pumpkin here. So I have a large batch of cards today. I didn't do a video yesterday because uh, I didn't stream yesterday and the cards, there weren't very many. There's like five. So I decided I just combined uh, today's reveals and yesterday's reveal, throw them all in one video. This video is going to be a little longer, but eh, whatever. Um, first card of the day. Uh, this card is nine provisions. It is a crime card for syndicate profit one Look at the top cards from your deck plus an additional card for every crown you possess uh, Play the top card for free or play any other card from a crown cost equal to its distance from the top shuffle the remaining cards back into the deck uh, Lots of text basically it's a tutor card um, The further into the deck the card that you want to get the more coins you're going to spend. So the idea is, let's say you play this in round one. Uh, let's say you have zero coins. Uh, you play this as profit one, so you immediately get one coin. Uh, the first one is free, so you get to look at the top card, and then you get to look at the top uh, second card, and that's it. And you get to choose from the two cards. So it's basically like a last wish. Last wish is nine provisions. Look at the top two cards, play one, uh, discard the other. It's a little better because it doesn't discard. Discarding is pretty bad, especially when you see two cold cards. So... It's a little better than Last Wish, but that's not saying anything because Last Wish is one of the worst cards in the game. Um, yeah, so if you're going to play this Last Wish, it's not great, but the power of this card is it's much more than that. So let's say you have nine crowns, uh, profit one, or I, I, I guess you're losing profit. So eight crowns, uh, you get your profit one, um, the first one's free, and then you get to look at the next nine. So you get to look at 10 cards. Cool. Um, if you're playing this in round one, you're going to see most of your deck. Uh, in round one, you have 10 cards, so you have 15 left in your deck. This is assuming no thinning. Um, so you're going to be looking at two-thirds of your deck. Um, and here's the thing. If you do play cards from the top two-thirds, uh, and it's at the bottom of the two-thirds, spending like nine coins is pretty bad. Uh, if you're playing this card and you're spending nine coins, it's not a good card. You'd be better off playing Royal Decree. Uh, it's two provisions more, but you can hit that card and you don't have to blow nine coins. Um, the place where this card shines is round three. So in round three, uh, so typically you have 10 cards in round one and you draw three and three. So you're at 16, so you have nine cards left in your deck. Uh, if you play something like Roach, Flying Redania, um, the bronze uh, thin cards, so you could, that's like fork thinning right there, uh, then you'll be down to roughly like five cards in round three. Um, then this card's a little better, but here's the big issue with this. I... If you thin that much, yeah, this card is pretty cheap in terms of what you're paying off of the crowns, but you've probably drawn all your gold cards. Uh, if you've played Gwent before and you've played Royal Decree, one of the worst feelings ever is getting to round three, drawing every gold card, including Royal Decree, and you Royal Decree a bronze unit. That feels terrible. That's like one of the worst feelings ever. You're like, oh, this is 11p of uselessness. It's just terrible. Um, the beauty of Royal Decree... Uh, I mean, it's only being seen in like two decks right now, uh, but the reason Royal Decree is good is because you can play like tech cards and depending on the matchup or depending on what you need in that given time, you can pull out a specific card uh, or or you really need a card for a very particular combo. So we see it in SK. Uh, SK likes it because, well, Dagger Herald is kind of an important combo, so it needs that and because the discard package got nerfed, uh, it doesn't thin as much as it used to. So. Hitting that uh, Dagger Herald is kind of important. Uh, if you do draw that combo in round one, you can always use it to pull out like your your Geralt or your Olaf with your Canute or a Canute for Olaf or whatever. There, there's a bunch of like combo-esque cards in that type of deck. So being able to have Royal Decree adds a consistency and it's great. The other deck that we see Royal Decree in is Northern Realms. Northern Realms runs it for Drog. Uh, but we've seen that it's better to just run uh, Alzer's Double Cross for Drog because Drog is your tallest unit, so you can save two and just run ADC. So, yeah, Royal Decree doesn't see much play. It's just not worth it. You're, you're better off running Thinning and just drawing the gold by round three. The only time Royal Decree is necessary is if you need to draw that particular card in round one. Uh, let's say you're playing Gimpy and, I don't know, maybe you're playing a Lock card and you're playing Geralt and you're playing a bunch of tech cards. Your opponent plays a tall card that you need to remove. Bam, Royal Decree, Geralt. Great. It uh, doesn't really work if you don't draw uh, Royal Decree, but we're kind of just assuming that you're drawing that in round one or the tech card. Anyways, it's a lot of explanation. Um, basically, this is kind of like Royal Decree, but it's only really good in round three. And as I've tried to explain, Royal Decree in round three isn't very good. Um, it's just not. So 
the best time to play this is the worst time to get value out of this card, if that kind of makes sense. Um, so yeah, I, I, as cool as a card as it is, I love how it use, utilizes crown. I love the mechanic. I think it's really neat. Uh, I think this is probably one of the better uses for crowns that CDPR has come up with. But I don't think it's that good. I, I just, I, I honestly don't think it's that good. The one scenario I see this card seeing play is a super combo oriented deck. Um, there have been decks that run, uh, Deathwish does this, um, Svalbard does this with artists. Um, I, the idea is you go to round two, it's a cheese deck, you Royal Decree out like Avalok, and then you play something like uh, 1k Fables into uh, Adrenaline Rush, and you A Rush the Avalok into round three, and then you Avalok something, give it immunity, uh, and then you go from there. We've seen this in, um, uh, yeah, I guess it really is just Artists uh, SK and Deathwish with Gales. Um, maybe there's a, oh, oh, and sorry, Calvite or Kahir, sorry. Uh, Kahir also does it in Nilfgaard. The, the, these types of decks are super gimmicky. They see play, but they're not very good. Um, maybe there's some like four card combo with Syndicate and this card is just needed for consistency. So I could see this strictly for the, the you need, like Royal Decree is not enough. Like you play Royal Decree and that's not enough consistency. So you need more than Royal Decree so you run this card. Um, it's slightly better than Royal Decree because it can pull out crime cards so like if you want to play this into justice you can do that where royal decree can't hit crime cards so that's nice uh maybe there's a i was gonna say something with cleaver in this like uh the new leader cleaver but that doesn't really make sense um so yeah it's an okay card uh, i don't think it'll see too much play i might be wrong but i don't think i'm going to be uh i i, I just don't think so outside of a super combo oriented uh deck i, I just i don't see it yeah, uh, I, it's a little longer explanation for this card just because it is a little bit more complicated. I, I promise the future cards in this uh, review are going to be a little uh, more straightforward. Like this card. Uh, this card, I believe, is called Excommunication. It's six provisions. It is a crime card. Banish an allied unit, then play the top card from your deck. This card sucks. Like, it's atrocious. Um, I, I talked about this on stream for a while. I was trying to come up with scenarios where it's good. Uh, one scenario was, oh, you... You play this bank card, you get to see what's on top of your deck, and then you get to pull the top card off your deck. Oh, that's so cool, except it's shuffle the remaining cards. So you can't actually do that, which kind of sucks. Um, this also banishes it. If it didn't banish, there are some interesting scenarios. You could use this like a decoy uh, on Roach, so you could play this on Roach, which is a little better than decoy. Uh, you could play this with the new Flying Redania. You could shuffle Redania back into your deck, play some random card from your deck, um, and then Flying Redania would come back out because of the Horde mechanic. But it banishes, so it kind of just kills everything. All, all the combos I can think of is just dead. Uh, some people have said, oh, you play this on, like, your two-point um, spawns in, like, a spawn archetype. But the problem is that's not good. You're destroying a two and pulling a random card off your deck. That's garbage. I mean, you, you could play it with Fisher King, but or you could just play Fisher King in round one or two and draw the card. Uh, this card is... Uh, unless there's some combo I'm missing, this card seems really bad. I guess if your opponent plays Rot Tosser, you can throw away the Cow Carcass. That's like the best scenario for this card, in my opinion. Uh, also, if you've ever played Prince Vellum, uh, like in a Northern Realms deck or whatever, playing it in round one loses you the game most of the time. Well, from my experience, because... I'll be getting blood, I'll have Prince in my hand, and I need to play it, and I just need to hope to draw a good gold. Or not a game-winning gold, like, what's it called? Hubert. So when I play Prince, it hits Hubert in round one, and I lose the game. You just lose. Game over. Your entire deck is built around one gold card, and you whiff it in round one, and game over. Um, this card's a little better than that. Uh, okay, in that scenario, because it can hit bronze cards, not necessarily gold card, uh, but that can still happen. So I, I don't know. I think this card is trash. I, I don't understand why you would play this. I wouldn't play this at 5p. I, I just I don't understand the purpose of this card. Uh, unless I'm missing something or there's some com upcoming combo that exists, I don't see why you would ever play this card. Yeah. Moving along, we have a 8 provision 4 strength unit, uh, Intimidate, which means every time you play a crime card, it gets plus 1. Uh, deploy melee, lock a unit, deploy range, uh, purify unit. So this is very similar to the existing Agora. Agora is 5 for 9, and you can lock and unlock. This is a little better because it has Intimidate, so it ha it's like a it's an engine, and 
excuse me, I don't think people are going to remove it just because there are too many other high priority engines in Syndicate to remove. You're not going to waste removal on this. So that's nice. You'll get a few points off of this with like your, maybe your two or three crime cards in hand. Um, but this is better because it's purify unit, not unlock. The reason that's better, yes, purify removes a lock. So in that case, it's the same thing. But if your opponent plays a bleed card or bleeds one of your units, you can remove that bleed. If your opponent plays Gabor or another resilience unit, you can remove that resilience with the Purify. If your opponent plays Fence, which is uh, the card I talked about in the last video, it was the last card, uh, the card's insane. Um, it's like a potential 12 for four, I think. Uh, yeah, 12 for four because of Vitality takes every turn. Well, you can completely negate that card with this, right? You just Purify off the Vitality. Uh, so I do think this card will be good. I do think it'll see play. Uh, if your opponent locks one of your cards, um, one of your engines, you can always purify to unlock. My guess is Syndicate's going to run muzzle because it's going to be a muzzle meta. And well, if you muzzle something that you like, yeah, you can purify it and un unlock it. So, um, and I don't think we've seen any lock cards in Syndicate yet. My guess is we'll probably get one. Most factions have a lock card. Maybe this is the lock card for the faction. Uh, it's a little more expensive on the lock side, but the extra purify, is, it is kind of nice. And the Intimidate is always welcome. So, um... If you're strictly playing this for lock and you run zero crime cards in your deck, this card's pretty bad. Uh, Dora Gary's five for eight. Uh, this is four for eight. Um, granted, it has a lot more synergy than that, and unlocking a card or purifying a card is very valuable. So, yes, I do think this card will see play. Is it auto-include play? Um, I wouldn't say that, but I, I do think it will see a fair amount of play. It's just a good card. The What you can use this with is very versatile. Very good card. Moving along, we have the Ox and Serret of this uh, faction for Syndicate. Um, essentially, there's another card right after this, which is named uh, Ewald. Um, both of them are seven provisions. I guess I'll just go ahead and go show it right here. They're both seven provisions. They're both four strength. They both have profit two. If uh, the other card is in the graveyard, increase the card's initial profit by two. V2 range, boost an ally unit by two. The other one is damage an enemy unit by two. Uh, the damage is typically better just because damaging cards is better than boosting cards because you get to kill your opponent's engine. So typically you're going to want to play the boost one first in round one or two and then play the damage one in round three. Is this card good? Um, on play, it's a six for seven. The other one, assuming one of the initial ones is in the graveyard, is going to be an 8 for 7. So they balance out at 7 for 7, assuming you meet the condition that one's in your graveyard. Uh, granted, your opponent can uh, use like Regis and Banish it or Wily, but I don't think they're going to just because this isn't really an engine. I mean, it's a fee engine, but there are other engines that actually gain value, like uh, gain crowns at the end of the turn or flying Redania. So my guess is they're not going to spend a Banish on this card just because they can't really afford to. Um, are these cards good? Yeah, 7 for 7 is fine. Uh, and it also has the ability to expend your coins, right? Both of these have fee 2 for either boost 2 or damage 2. And those are two different ways in your deck to spend coins. That's just good. It's just an average card value. And it's just good. And what's also nice is, unlike Oxera, Oxera, you need to have both in hand to get like the full value out of each of them. Whereas these, you don't actually need them in hand. Um, but it's a little weird because it means you do have to play one in round one or round two. Um, granted, I don't think you mind too much if you play one of these in round one or two because you're technically creating carryover on the next card. Um, so yeah, I think it's a great card. Uh, it's not breaking the game. I think it's fair and it's just good enough. Um, if they didn't have the fee on it, I would say it wouldn't see much play. But because of the fee, yeah, it's just good. Uh, having flex damage sounds really, really strong. Um, so I, I would say the damage one is strictly better than the boost one, but eh, boost is fine too. Um, I, I, I think they're both going to be auto include. The only reason they wouldn't be auto include is if the deck seven slots are super, super tight and there's no room for these, but I don't think that's going to be the case. I think these cards are just good and they're going to see play in every syndicate jet deck, just like Ox and Serret are in every Nilfgaard deck. Um, I wouldn't say that these are, well, Ox and Serret are really good cards. These two cards, they're good. I, I don't know if they're as good. Um, just because Oxer, they're both removal, whereas both of these are not removal. Um, like, if both of them had damage and allied unit by two, I think they'd be insane. Um, 
Yeah, they're just good cards. You will see them in every Syndicate deck uh, going forward unless they get nerfed. Um, I'm not going to talk about this card. It's identical to the one prior. Uh, it just damages instead of boost. This is the better of the two if you're going into round three, uh, unless you're going against a no unit deck, in which case the boost will be better. So yeah, I guess we can go ahead and skip this one. Moving along. <laughs> this card is nine provisions, three strength, deploy melee, destroy an enemy unit with bounty, tribute five, boost self by that unit's base power. Um, so bounty is a status you put on your opponent's cards. Uh, and if you destroy that card, you get coins equal to, I believe it's the base strength of the unit. Yeah, because provisions wouldn't really make sense. Yeah, so base strength of the unit. Um, yeah, and this kind of acts like a poison effect in current Gwent, which is if that unit has poison, uh, the second poison kills it. This would be if the first season, uh, if the if the unit has bounty, you can kill that unit. Um, and it, it has this, the tribute five is kind of weird. Um, some people think that it's bad that it's so the, the way that tribute works is when you play the card you have to decide on the tribute so you don't get the deploy first um which might seem bad because oh well i want to boost self i want to use the tribute five from what i kill i want to kill the unit let's say you kill a five i want to use those five coins that i just obtained to use uh for the tribute like this is strictly worse well let's say you have seven coins and you play this card Right? You don't want, let's say you kill a five, you don't want to go to 12 because you can't go to 12. You can only go to nine, right? So you, you lose a bunch of coins. Um, whereas in this case, you'll spend it, go down to two, and then go back up to seven uh, if you're killing a five. So in this case, I, I think it's better most of the time. The only times it's not better is if you have to remove something immediately, like if you don't remove a card in two turns, you just lose the game. There aren't very many of those. Um, so I, I think for the most part, this is actually better. Uh, now, how good is this card? Destroy an enemy unit with bounty. I don't think it's that good. Here's why. Uh, I, I When I revealed this on, or sh reviewed it on stream, most of the people were saying this card's great. I think this card's terrible. Um, yeah, if you queue into big monsters and they play a spear tip, you put a bounty on a spear tip, you pop this, this gets, what, plus 12, that's crazy, great, um, you get nine coins, cool, but how often will that happen? Probably not too often, um, I mean, I remember I said the same thing when Poison Mechanic was released, I said, oh, this looks really cool, it's tall remover for Scoia'tael, if big monsters are meta, Poison's really good, except Big Monster wasn't meta at all, and it just wasn't good. Poison's like a terrible mechanic because there's not enough of it. Um, it's a two-card combo, and it's just... The, the other big problem is uh, a lot of the poison cards are really low provisions. So, like, you have these poison mechanics on five provision cards that you want to mulligan away, and keeping them feels awkward. And if you have an auto mount, it's really awkward. It's just It's just a really awkward mechanic and i think bounty is going to be the same uh the payoff's a little better because not only do you destroy it you get extra coins so maybe it's good enough um i i just don't see it i mean maybe in the future maybe in two or three expansions when we get more bounty cards uh but at the moment i just i just like poison i don't think there's going to be enough bounty cards to warrant this card um maybe there's a lot of tall monsters and this card gets insane value we'll see uh, i just i, I don't Based on the way Poison worked and how it panned out, I'm going to probably apply the same. I, I understand that it's a little different because um, I lost my train of thought. So the reason it's different is because uh, Bounty, when you play something on Bounty, you can still get the coin value if you just kill the unit, whereas Poison only works with another Poison. But while it's better in that case, for this card to work, you have to have the other Bounty card. Right? You, it's not if you have two bounty cards, they, they kill the unit. It's you need a bounty card, and then you need this, right? If you draw the bounty card without this, you're going to throw the bounty card away. And then if you draw this and you don't have the bounty card, you're going to have to throw this card away, right? And that's just creates for some very awkward scenarios where you end up mulliganing a nine provision card. Mulliganing a nine provision card feels terrible, right? If you're mulliganing a nine provision card, you should probably not be playing the card. Uh, yeah, so... I, I just, I, I don't think it's going to be that good. Maybe in the future, but I, I just, I, I don't think it'll be that good based on how well Poison worked out. Um, granted, we are, we, this is a bounty card. 
Four provisions, profit three, place a bounty on an enemy unit. So the ideal scenario is you play this, you put a bounty on like a spear tip, you play the previous card, bam, huge swing, full coin value, tons and tons of value. Yeah, okay. Now, what happens if you draw this card in your opening hand and you don't draw that gold? Well, you're gonna mulligan this because it's a three for four. And that's bad. Unless, unless you can kill cards. So, unless you have a heavy removal syndicate deck, which maybe you do. Maybe, maybe you play Regis, maybe you play a Frit, maybe you play everything that does damage, and then you just bank on all this bounty and you win the game that way. Maybe. Maybe that'll be a deck. Maybe bounty is actually really good. I don't know. Um, because the, the, the bounty mechanic of being able to gain coins is something that we haven't really dealt with. Uh, it's not the same. Uh, it's like an extra incentive to kill a card more so than poison. So maybe it's just good enough. Maybe bounty is insane. Um, I Once again, I just don't think there's going to be enough bounty cards. So um, obviously you play this card in any kind of bounty deck uh, with the previous card. But outside of that very particular deck, this card won't see any play. Yeah. Moving right along. Ooh, okay. Okay. Seven provisions, five strength. This is a dual card with Northern Realms. Whenever this unit receives a boost, give bleeding to a random enemy unit for two turns. This card's really good. Like, insanely good. Um, okay, if you're playing Meave and you boost this once, it gives a unit bleeding for two. So on one Meave tick, it's a seven for seven. That's good. Um, that's comparable to a Tritum Infantry. Tritum Infantry is a three for four if you move boost it's a four for four but four for four is not great right five for four is normal seven for seven is fine right eight for seven is not normal seven for seven is good uh not to mention it can get more value right if you place this next to anna if you have a nausicaa sergeant you multiple uh boost this multiple times if you just me boost this over a couple turns if this is the lowest unit and you have botchling or i guess lubricant ticking on it uh if you have a neneke you can boost this a bunch of times yes it can tick on the same unit so if you're playing against a big monster deck and you boost this five times and it hits like a spear tip five times that kind of sucks if it's later on into the game because yeah you might have bleed 10 but you're probably not going to get all 10 bleed ticks because you might only have five cards left in your hand which kind of sucks um so this card will be better against a deck that goes wide uh you have a lower chance of hitting the same unit multiple times but even then if you if this procs once you're you're getting good value if it procs more than once which isn't that hard to do in northern realms uh you're getting great value it's just a really good card like staple in every meave deck outside of meave eh, probably won't see too much play uh but in meave it's a good card uh is this enough to push a meave archetype ah it definitely suggests it i mean it's a good card um maybe this plus the new northern realms legendary which gives shield maybe a shield king rogner list with me will work maybe i mean i would love that to work um so yeah this card is auto include in any me deck really really good card um yeah uh outside of northern realms so in a syndicate deck will this card see play actually maybe because we saw in the previous video i showed two different cards both of which are fee one i believe they're both five provisions one's four strength one three strength one gains two profit one has one profit it's, uh, the leak boy and the armor smith dude or blacksmith um, both of them are fee one give a unit vitality or boost by one uh, both of which synergize with this card and because you're most likely going to be playing one of those cards in your deck probably the uh, blacksmith because you need ways to expend your coins really easily. Um, this just works well with it. You put that card on the board, the blacksmith. Um, you don't have to use the ticks immediately because your opponent's not going to spend removal on a fee card because there are other cards to deal with. Um, and then you follow it up with this and maybe you boost it three times and you give six bleed. That's just good. Uh, it's just a good value card. Um, it just fits well with the deck. Maybe there's not enough of it. So like in a Northern Realms deck, there's a lot of single target boosting. So like it really makes sense to play this because you're going to get value out of this card in any round because you always have access to Meave. Uh, in a Syndicate list, if you're only playing two Blacksmith, it's probably not enough. Uh, if you're playing two Blacksmith and the other two Bronze, or, or two of the other Bronze, the uh, Leak Dude who gives Vitality, eh, maybe the consistency's there, maybe you play it. Um, but yeah, really, really good card for Northern Realms. Syndicate, it's playable. Is it auto-include? Obviously not. Uh, but it, it will see a tiny bit of, eh, it'll depend. It'll depend on how many of those cards, those bronzes that you play. If you only play the two blacksmith, 
you you might play this card if you play two of for both of them yeah you can play with you can play this card definitely if, if you're playing all uh, two of each bronze so four total on your deck you can definitely get away with playing this card uh, and you will play this card it's a good card very good card Moving along, uh, we're going to move towards the Swarm cards. The last couple cards are Swarm-esque. Uh, this card is 9 Provisions. It is a crime. Damage 3 adjacent enemy units by 2. Death Blow for every enemy units destroyed. Spawn a Firestorm Zealot on the opposite row. So this card, uh, the Firestorm Zealots are 2 Strength. Um, so best, best case scenario. They have 3 units. All are 2 Strength. And they're adjacent. You damage all 3. You kill all 3. And so you've done six damage um, over three units, and you get six value. You get three two drops. Uh, so you get 12 value for nine. Wow. Super value card. 12 for nine. That's so good. And it has extra synergy with the extra spawn zealots with your, with your swarm deck. Yeah. Um, the problem is that's best case scenario. And like, yeah, that's a, that's a pretty decent ceiling. 12 for nine is good. The problem is what's, what's the floor? Uh, and the answer to that question is, well, the, the lowest floor is you hit three units and none of them are twos or ones, and it's a six for nine. Eh, well, I, okay, even lower, they have two units on the board and one's in melee and one's in range, and it's a two. Uh, but we're going to, we're sake of the argument, we're going to say you're hitting three units, so it, it's six for nine. Is six for nine good? No, obviously not. Um... So how easy is it to hit a two? Um, it's it's doable. Um, you, you, you can set it up. You you can do two damage. Um, so then you're getting eight for nine. Is eight for nine okay? Yeah, it's all right. If you can consistently get eight for nine, if consistently, if you can consistently get eight for nine, I think this card is playable. Uh, because if you can make the floor eight, uh, getting eight or more value out of this card is good enough, especially because. Uh, the Fire Sworn Zealots do synergize with your deck. Will that happen? We'll see. Um, so the two cards that I mentioned earlier, the Ox Serret Pair for Syndicate, um, they do damage on fee. So what you can, in theory, do is you can set that card up. Uh, if you have a bunch of coins, you can use that card. You can ping a bunch of cards down to two. You can set up three twos, and you can play this card and get 12 for 12, or 12 for nine. Maybe that actually works. Maybe you can consistently do that. Who knows? We'll see. Um, here's my other issue. So, in theory, it's really good in the Swarm deck because, well, you get three extra units, assuming you can meet the condition, um, which is really good for a Swarm deck. But here's the thing. To set up that kind of Swarm, or to set up the potential of spawning three of these, you need to be running damage in your deck. Um, and if you're playing a Swarm deck, you don't really want to play damage, right? Um, if you've ever watched my stream, I sometimes play a, uh, a wide Arrakis Queen deck. Uh, essentially, there, there's no Glusty Warp in it. It's just a deck that goes super wide. It plays like Jermaine. It plays uh, Arrakis Nest. And the idea is you get nine units on the melee row. Then you play Zoltan three times via Zoltan, uh, the eight provision card that consumes and replays it, and Renew. So you play Zoltan three times for plus 18 on the melee row, and you just win the game. You just win the game via Point Slam. Um, and that deck has one removal in the entire deck, and it's... Um, the eye card, uh, Parasite. It has Parasite in the deck because it's an organic card and it unbricks uh, Wispus, and it's nice against Priest SK. Uh, yeah, it has one removal in the entire deck because the idea is you don't care about engines. You're just going to go super wide, get tons of value, and just win the game via Point Slam because wasting time on engines is a waste of time when all you want to do is play points. Um, that's kind of how I feel about this card. If you want to play a Swarm deck, you just want to Point Slam. You just want to fill your deck with cards that go wide, Fill your board up, get tons of value off of going wide via Yen, via Zoltan, um, and just win that way. You don't don't bother doing damage. You don't care about damage. Just win the game via point slam. That's typically how swarm decks work. Point slam. Uh, if you guys remember monsters with uh, Trish Butterfly, you'd fill up an entire board with units. You play Trish Butterfly, and you get like plus four, and then like plus ten, like plus ten, and you just win the game via that way, right? So it kind of makes sense in the swarm deck because you can get more units but because you have to start adding cards that do damage to your deck it, it kind of deviates from your game plan which is play lots of units or sp i guess summon lots of units so i don't actually think this card's gonna see much play in a, in a in a swarm deck i just why 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 worry about damaging and killing units when you could just 
play cards that summon units. Just, just don't worry about this card. I do think this card will see play outside of a Swarm deck, which is kind of weird to think about, um, simply because it is a 12 for 9 if you can set up. So, yeah, I mean, that that's a pretty decent payoff. If you're already playing cards like uh, this card, and you're damaging cards, and you can easily set up that that the two damage condition, then sure, why not? 12 for 9? Cool. Um, so, yeah, I don't think this card will see any play in the Swarm deck. Um, I think it might see some play in other other lists. Um, yeah, we'll see. I, I think this is kind of a trap card because people are going to immediately throw this into their Swarm decks and they're going to find out that it's actually really bad and it underperforms most of the time. Um, yeah. The other thing is your opponent can kind of play around this. Uh, if they do have a two drop, they can just play it far right or far left so that when you do play this, the adjacent units is only unit, not plural, because there's only one unit next to the two. So... Uh, there, there is some counterplay from your opponent's side. So, yeah, I, I don't think this card is very good uh, in a Swarm deck. Outside of a Swarm deck, it might see a tiny bit of play because it is a pretty decent value card uh, if you can consistently pull it off. Moving along, we have another Swarm card. Well, it works with Swarm. Five provisions, three strength, range. Whenever you spawn one or more units, gain one crown, tribute four, boost self by two. Really expensive tribute. Tribute four to get plus two. The idea with the tribute is... You really need this card to stick. Like, you are willing to lose two points to give this thing two extra strength. Is that worth it? <sighs> I don't think so. Here's why. You want to play this in a Swarm deck because, well, that's how you get extra value out of this. Swarm decks don't really play engines, at least not that I've seen. Um, I think the best way to play a Swarm deck is ignore engines, just go really wide and get value off of Zoltan Yennefer. So you don't want to be bothered with engines because typically engines get removed unless you have a lot of engines. So if you're only playing like two of these in your Swarm deck, they just get removed and that's terrible. Uh, you're playing like a three for five, which is pretty bad. Uh, even at five, it just gets locked or muzzled. So I don't think this card is very good. Um, there is a cool combo though. If you get two of these off, um, right? So if you do have two of these on the board and you spawn a unit, you get two crowns. Uh, there's a 10 provision, 4 strength unit that has profit 4, uh, and then it has a fee to spawn a, um, a zealot. So in theory, if you have two of these plus that card on like the melee row, uh, you can get infinite value. You could just spawn twos because every time you spawn a two, you get two crowns and then you paid for it. So you can keep going. So you could just infinite twos, except there's this thing called a row cap where you can only have nine cards. So you can get eight twos because... Well, the other unit will be on the row. Um, and it's a three-card combo. One of them being a gold card. So you need a very... Like, it's just not good, right? If one of the cards get killed, the entire combo falls apart. The payoff is actually pretty good. But three-card combos, unless it wins you the game, are typically not worth it. Uh, just because... Uh, if you want the three-card combo, you have to pay a lot of provisions in terms of... Um, consistency like royal decree uh it means you can never play those cards in round one or two if one get removed you just auto lose the game you start playing cards like avalok which aren't very good like ah, it's just not worth it like the payoff isn't there um it doesn't auto win you the game it's a cute combo i'm sure people will try it but i, I don't think it'll be that good but we'll see uh maybe the meta gets super greedy and nobody runs any form of engine removal in which case these cards stick but Let's be real. That's not happening. If that ever happened, Northern Realms would just be tier one and destroy everything. But yeah, that's just not the case. So yeah, I don't think this card's very good. I don't think it'll see any play, even in a Swarm deck. Outside of a Swarm deck, obviously it's garbage. Um, Yeah, pre pretty pretty bad card. Ooh, speaking of bad cards, this is not one of them. This card is very good in a Swarm deck. Six provisions, 10 strength. Yes, that is a 10 for six. That's big. We don't really have any 10 for 6s. Granted, there is a condition. Deploy damage self by 6. Reduce the damage by 1 for every Fire Sworn Zealot you control. So obviously in a Swarm deck where you're spawning lots of Fire Sworn Zealots, this deck, or this card is very good. Uh, if you do have 6 on the board, uh, this is a 10 for 6. Is a 10 for 6 good? Yeah, that's really good. That's really, really good. Um, if you have none, it's a 4 for 6, which is pretty bad. Um, there is some synergy with this card with, uh, Tatterwing, which is one of the cards that they released on day one or 
re revealed on day one. It's the six provision or eight provision, six strength uh, unit that consumes a unit by its uh, base value. So if you play this and it gets set down to four and you consume it with Tatterwing, it effectively is a 10 when you consume it and the Tatterwing goes to 16. So you get full value out of this 10 for six. That's really good. Um, except it is a two card combo and it kind of plays into tall removal. That's a 16. That, that's pretty big. Um, also, your opponent can just kill the four. If that combo ever becomes popular, your opponent just does four damage and kills it. So it's a cool combo. How good is it? Yeah, it's, okay. yeah, it's probably not very good, but it is kind of cool. Um, but obviously it's very good in the Swarm deck. Uh, this card, not the combo. Um, if you can consistently pull off 10 for six, that's insane. Uh, this is an extra reason to play Swarm. It's just a good card. High value card. Auto include in any Swarm deck. Good card. Not much more to say other than auto include in every Swarm deck. And our last card today is not actually a card. It is a leader. It is a Hemelfort. This guy has 16 provisions. Order, spawn, and summon Fire Sworn Zealot to an allied row. Charge three. Once all charges have been exhausted, gain two coins. So this is going to be your leader for your Swarm um, deck because you can well, spawn more Fire Sworn Zealots. I mean, you complete half of the requirement for this card with this leader. Uh, you get three of the six. If you're playing the six provisions, spawn three Fire Sworn Zealots if you have zero coins. That card's also really good with this, uh, this card. Um, yeah, it's just a good card or a good leader for the deck. Um, you're getting six value plus two extra coins. So you're getting roughly eight value, but the fire sworn zealots are a little better because of like the card I mentioned earlier and, uh, the artifact that gives these plus one. So a lot of synergy with the swarm archetype so far that we've seen. So is this leader good? Well, it's going to be auto include or like it is your go-to leader for any kind of swarm deck. Um, yeah, it's just good. Also note, it's charge three. It doesn't spawn all of them at once. The importance of this is similar to Morvin. You can just use it in round one. Let's say you're 10 points behind in round one and your biggest card in your hand is nine points. Normally you have to pass. Otherwise you go down either a, like two cards in round one or you're like you're losing on even. But with this leader, you can play that nine and then use one of his order ticks and get plus two. This is very valuable. Uh, it keeps you in rounds that you normally would not be allowed to stay in because of the extra two points. So the versatility on this is also really nice. Just having a two flex points is very, very important. Um, we saw this with Morvin. Morvin was actually seeing like the most play. Morvin was the best Nilfgaard leader for a period of time. Uh, they kind of changed him and made him more soldier oriented, which seemed good except it was bad so like the the second ability on morvin which is put like a soldier on top of the deck it's kind of cute but honestly who cares like you can pull off the vogelforce t-board combo which is kind of good i guess um yeah not being able to boost non-soldiers is pretty bad i actually had one game against a morvin player who didn't get any soldiers in round three and he just had a zero point leader and lost the game he lost that game by like three points um yeah, the fact that Morvin can't boost soldiers anymore is actually really bad. Uh, I honestly think they should probably revert it to any units just because he's pretty bad. You have to play soldiers with him and not having that flexibility is pretty painful. Anyways, anyways, um, yeah, so the versatility on this card is great. Um, it's, just a good, it's just a good leader. Uh, the extra two coins are pretty nice in round three. You're going to have cards that can spend coins, hopefully. Um, so yeah. It's a good leader. It will see play. It is your go-to leader for any kind of swarm deck. Um, yeah. Will you play this outside of a swarm deck? Um, maybe. The reason you would play it is, once again, that versatility. Being able... The, that flexibility of being able to spawn a two whenever you need to is very useful. Um, yeah, it just is. Uh, th those extra points are huge. Ethne does this often. Bruver does this often. Basically, any leader that has a few amounts of ticks... Um, yeah, maybe, maybe it'll see a little bit of play. Um, it's kind of hard to say because we haven't seen all the leaders yet, but, uh, yeah, it, it, it might see a little bit of play because of that flexibility. Yeah. Anyways, a little bit longer of a video today, a few more cards to go over. Hopefully it wasn't too long. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comment section below what you guys think about these cards. 
Um, I would love to hear your opinions on excommunication. This card right here. Maybe there's some combo I'm not thinking of, but I think this card is just terrible. Like, just unplayable. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys on the next video. Ciao.